here. First off, a uh, big shout out to the environment created by our fans, our people, Miami Hurricane family that came from all over, local and from abroad. They were awesome. And um, watching, just watching that was uh, brought back some awesome memories of, uh, of playing in this game. And certainly our players felt them and uh, impacted the game. Um, and then on top of that, obviously, uh, a very hard fought game and uh, we never really lost control of the game but it took us a little while to start pulling away. I think they did a good job with some of their coverages um, and they did put a little bit of pressure on the quarterback but we pounded the ball really well. You know, we ran the ball well, got downhill, got hats on hats and ran through tackles. Uh, we were aggressive with some fourth downs. Um, the defense was the story of the game. They just played uh, their tails off. They were. Putting pressure on the quarterback, they made it really difficult to run the football. They were getting 11 hats to the ball all the time. Um, they broke free from several just lasso collar holding calls that uh, you know we just got to keep getting better at. But all in all, just uh, very proud of our team. You know, two years ago we stood up here and, and talked about um, building it, and it's good to a couple years later into this to see a, a victory like that and earn the uh, earn the title of state champions. So. Yeah. Questions, please. Mario, what kind of a moment was it for the team, for Mark Fletcher, Mark Fletcher after the week, that he had to have that moment open the score? And that's as hard as it gets. I mean, you know, that was, uh, you know, we see Big Mark all the time. Uh, he's always at practice. It's kind of neat if you're a local player. Uh, parents, they find their way to practice, you know, get away from their bosses for a little bit and come out and get to see their sons. It's one of the greatest things in the world. I remember seeing my parents, you know, may they rest in peace. And, and that was, uh, that's, a, that's about as difficult as a thing I've seen. And Mark Jr. is about as good of a human being, competitor, teammate, brother, uh, as you could imagine. And that was felt by the entire organization. I mean, everybody, everybody knows him. Um, he's got the best seat in the house going forward, looking from above. And, uh, you know, I know, uh, I know he's super proud of Mark. Did you talk to Mark at all about whether he whether he wants to play tonight or how determined he was to play tonight? Mark, even the day of, as uh, emotional as it was, wanted to be around his brothers and, and his team. Um, and uh, it's you, you trust that guy with your life because he does everything the right way, regardless of uh, situation, circumstance. And then just looking at him and, and just hearing him out, this was this was what he wanted. Uh, and on top of that, just as importantly, it's what he deserves. You know. And I think uh, him and Damian are super tight. And uh, those two, along with, of course, AJ, Jordan, and Chris, I mean, it's a tremendous tandem back there. And it was good to see them have a great day. Mario, what does it say about him that he was able to have the type of game right out of the gate that he had for you guys tonight? Talk about Mark. Mark, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know I think if any of us was in that situation, though, can you imagine? You know, can you imagine, you know, being able to do that? So just a unique, elite, off-the-charts human being. Uh, he's just made of the right stuff. And a tr credit to his his parents. Uh, he was raised a certain way. That guy's as resilient as it gets. Um, I mean, you know, our, our hearts, man, I mean, what can you say, you know? I'm sure if, uh, man. Mario, Mario, Mario you, uh, the first two years that you were here, Florida State, outscored Miami 72 to 23 in the last two years. You as a head coach, this is the pendulum swung and you have your first one as a head coach versus Florida State, most hated rival. How does that personally feel for you? It feels good because it's good for the team because the team is one know. You know, I think about maybe some of the personal stuff in the off season for a few minutes and I just blow it off. It's never it's never been that. We knew when we came here that we we're gonna get our teeth kicked in early. I mean I probably spoke to Several people in this room about man, wow, this is quite a monumental task. We got to flip this thing. We got to flip this roster. All these other in-state schools are so far ahead. They have a foundation. They've been to bowl games. They've won conferences, and we gotta, we gotta start it up. And that's painful, particularly when it comes to the trenches. And I think the trenches tonight are a great indication of progress. Um, a lot of hard work by our entire organization, recruiting staff, our offensive line coach Alex Mirabal, Coach Pata. Coach Reggie Bain, our defensive line coaches, Taylor, you know, Salavea, Stroud, Santana. I mean, um, it's, a, it's a great example of working your butt off and keeping your head down and not worry about all the crap that comes with rebuilds, you know. And I think
think it's good for you know young coaches to not ever hesitate to take on a rebuild if they believe in it because deal with all the crap and nonsense for a little bit and then start putting it together, start getting wins. So we're progressing, but we're not anywhere near where we want to be yet. Mario did eight yards and two rushing touchdowns tonight for Damian. That's, there's not many guys in the history of the series that have done that, believe it or not. I think it's only like 10 or 11 that have ever done that in the same game in 69 years. Once, you said earlier in the week that guys who haven't played in this game have an understanding of it, and he certainly seemed like he has an understanding of what this Oh, one. yeah, and he's been in some big ones. you know. And I think what people don't realize, he got here a little bit later than the rest. So his learning curve was a little bit different. Everybody wants to happen right now. And our summers are awesome. Like our training regiment, the way our player-led workouts are, uh, are carried out, they're just elite. And, but it still takes time. And, and we were chucking the ball around really well early on. And today, we still threw it around OK, but not as effective. But the last couple weeks, you see the running game now getting in sync, right? Now you see how you know, we, we run a lot of different plays than what he ran you know, when he was at Oregon State. And now he's really, he's really feeling comfortable in the system. And what you see is an absolute, uh, just a very physical, tough dude that he's hard to bring down. You know, you're not going to arm tackle him. And he takes a lot of pride in either making the first guy miss or running him over. Mario, Mario you the backstory on the trick play, the touchdown reception by Cam Ward? Texas. Texas to Texas. Meaning Arroyo to Cam Ward. <laughs> Two Texas guys. That was the name of the play. Mario, do you what know? was the story behind it? Um, you know, down there you get a lot of cover zero. Um, you know, it's, um, I mean, it was just something that, you know, Coach Dawson cooked up with the rest of the staff, and it was the right time to call it. You know, it was the right time to call it, and uh, I think the fans got a kick out of it as well. And, you know, Cam got himself a touchdown. I'm going to do a couple more for Coach. Coach, after you did the, 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 the in between um, the in between quarters interview, going from the third to the fourth, you, you turned to your sidelines and said, come on, man, was there something you were upset with, um, effort, just trying to motivate your guys for the last 15 minutes? What was that all? I'm, I'm not sure um, exactly the reference. Uh, I know that when it comes to the fourth quarter, we win the fourth quarter. You know, we win the fourth quarter. It's very important to us. So when we throw up four fingers, it means something. And um, we just always got to have intensity, energy, um, you know, I think. Those two guys back there exemplified that tonight. And I just think, look, there's nothing worse than a coach that just stands there with a thumb in his nose. You know what I mean? I mean, whatever we always can do to help our guys and bring energy to the sidelines, we do these guys bust their butts. And it's awesome to have an insane crowd, but it's even, it's just as important to have a great sideline to see your brothers and your teammates supporting you and bring in the juice. All right, you had three straight close wins before this week. How good did it feel to get a decisively controlling win? I mean, to me, the most important thing is that we play our best football. You know, at the end of the day, it's all these games are playoff games. They're all conference games. They all mean something. So the goal is to be 1-0, and our goal is to be 1-0 and play our best football as well. This was progress in that direction. Again, hats off to the defense. They set the tone. They did it with the front seven, and then the back end guys, you know what they did tonight? They communicated really well. They were just thinking lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. That's what we did early in the season. And I think we're back on track and doing that. Uh, we got some things to clean up, um, but certainly looking forward to getting back in there and being 1-0 for the week. And again, critically important, you know, to go out there and, and, and beat this program and to be undefeated in the state of Florida. I think it sends a strong message. I think the entire um, – all recruits in state, out of state, can now clearly see the trajectory of this program versus the trajectory of the other programs. Great. Thank you, Coach. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>